Uh, good afternoon. It is Wednesday, September 8th at 2 o'clock. Uh, this is the meeting of the Public Art Committee in the second floor media room. Uh, Marissa, would you call the roll, please? Yes. Ms. Jennings? Here. Ms. Gregory? Here. Mr. Meals? Here. Ms. Robinson? Here. Mr. Sallow? Here. Mr. Stackhouse? Here. Ms. Hennessy? Here. We have a quorum. Um, today we have a uh, guest presentation by Renee Vinson, who will be um, telling us about comprehensive and strategic planning. Uh, Renee is the planning director for Tarpon Springs. But just a quick um, bit of uh, business. Um, we didn't have a quorum at our August meeting, so we need to approve the, meet, uh, the minutes from July 14th and August 11th. Let's take July 14th. Are there any comments, any corrections or amendments to the minutes? Motion to uh, accept the minutes as submitted. I so move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Minutes accepted as submitted. August 11th minutes, any uh, comments or corrections? Motion to accept is submitted. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Minutes accepted is submitted. Renee, you're up. All right. <laughs> uh, her presentation's up on the screens, folks, so you can. Oh, okay. And I haven't used this setup before, so. Bear with me we'll be um, gentle. Have, I, have I <laughs> fumble my way through. Um, for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm Renee Vincent. I'm the planning, design, planning and Zoning Director for the City of Tarpon. And I am back on my second stint, about a little over a year in. Uh, previously, I was here from 2012 to 2014 uh, in the same position. So um, I'm happy to be back. It's, it's fun. I like, uh, I like small town local government as opposed to the amorphousness of uh, working for Pinellas County. So uh, with that, uh, thank you for asking me to come and talk to you a bit about um, where we are with our strategic plan. Yes, ma'am. Uh, just a comment. Uh, there is a printout of Renee's presentation in your handouts. Sorry. That's oh, okay. Um, no, thank you for asking me to come and, and talk a little bit about uh, the strategic plan and our comprehensive plan. The, um, the strategic plan initiative began, um, let's see, we're about three months into it. It took us quite a while to get to a scope of work with the Board of Commissioners. Um, and we, the, the board hired a collaborative team between USF Institute of Government and St. Pete College Collaborative Labs to do that work. And that, that's really, it's gonna continue on through, uh, the draft plan will probably be done around uh, March timeframe um, of next year. And then we have you know a year long kind of implement, initial implementation to make sure that we use the plan and, um, and are implementing the way that, that we should. Um, the comprehensive plan is occurring up, up, update, and this is our first up, update that we've done, major update since, oh wow. It's been probably 15 years since a wholesale update to the comp plan has been done. It's been a long time. Mm -hmm. um, my goal uh, you know, all along with this is to, as much as possible, is to really integrate those two plans, the comprehensive plan and the strategic plan, comp plan being a 30 to 40 year plan, strategic plan more of a five to seven to 10 year plan. But I want, uh, hopefully we can orient both of those around a common set of you know, core values, focus areas, kind of mission, mission values so that you know, we don't have the public getting vision weary from, okay, what's the next thing that we're doing? So we're really trying to coordinate uh, moving forward with our, um, with our public input and, and how those plans get drafted. So. We're just starting on the, um, let's see if I can advance the slide here. We're just starting on the comp plan. We've had the notice to proceed issue, notice to proceed issued um, about two weeks ago. So that will be kicking off. Your best source of uh, information for both of these, and if I can get this to come back over here, I cannot. Um, there's two links there for um, uh, our Connect Tarpon Springs website. Uh, one, one is for the strategic plan and one is for the comprehensive plan. And those are project pages where we like to, to push information out. Um, on the comprehensive plan, you'll see some results. We've also had some preliminary polling um, there and, and survey work done. Um, so focusing back on the strategic plan and where we are, 
we've had an initial kickoff session with the Board of Commissioners uh, back in July. And that was really that first, you know, beginning stages of developing your mission, vision, and values for the strategic plan. And I know this is really hard to read, but I think you have a handout, so that's good. Mm -hmm. But you'll notice, uh, so they went through three or four, you know, processes with the with the board members. And the first was, you know, identifying what what are our current successes? How, you know, what's been, you know, what's great about Tarpon Springs and what are you proud of? Um, and then they shifted over to the future successes. And so what, what do you see as the things that are going to continue and make the city viable and vibrant and great for the future? And one of the things that you'll notice under that future successes is more public art. So the board's already, you know, already kind of in lockstep with, I believe, is what, what your goals are for, the, for your master plan. Um, and then at the bottom, again, this is the, the first set of guiding principles that have you know that emerged out of that that first workshop on august 26th we had a second engagement se online community engagement session um, and this was really the first first introduction with the public uh, we had close to 80 people register but we only had probably about 40 to 45 that participated i think mm -hmm. i think joan i think you were on there yeah um and so we were trying to build off of what had already been done by the board and, and then bringing in additional input into these various, you know, focus areas. You know, so not only ranking what, uh, what the board had already done, but also then providing additional input. Um, and, and again, you'll see, so you'll see references to, you know, preservation, public art, and things of that nature. So again, we're just, we're kind of, this is a building process. So the schedule for the, for the upcoming events that the public or you whomever you know would like to participate in um, there will be individual and group stakeholder interviews that will be taking place uh, beginning um, it says mid-september to mid-october that list is still being refined i will tell you that um, all of our boards and committees those names were provided as potential people to be interviewed so you may get a call um, so ultimately the board of commissioners will weigh in on who who is on that you know that stakeholder interview list so and again this is just to further refine the direction that we're going there will also be a full uh, resident feedback survey that will be available community-wide um, that'll be going on for um, about a month as well and then in february and say, excuse me, January and February, we'll have two community focus group meetings. Those will both be in person and virtual. Uh, we have one on a weekend and we have one on a weekday. Um, so by that time, we'll be, you know, really focusing in on the nuts and bolts of the strategic plan and what, you know, what the content is going to be. Um, so, you know, again, stay, stay tuned to that Connect Tarpon page as things may Sometimes these things have to be malleable, so we're trying to push as much as information we can about meetings and things out uh, through that platform. Kind of switching gears a bit for the comprehensive plan update. So uh, this is a big focal point for me. Um, you know, our plan is very, very rooted in the original 1990s growth management law for Florida. It's been tweaked along the way in updates, but this will be the first kind of wholesale update that's been done since it's, you know, probably since about 2008. So we have a lot of room for uh, for development on this. And so we started, we actually went out for request for proposals um, and put this out. And ultimately, we, we did select Tyndale Oliver to be our consultant on this project. But we started in the RFP with a series of questions. And it, I think it really gets to... Um, you know, where we want to be as a community over the next 20 to 30 years. And so some of those pertinent questions that we ask in the RFP there, and we listed them here, won't read all of them, but you know, how, how do we respond to sea level rise? You know, you know, is there a, is there a good economy of scale where we can stop relying on continued growth and you know, work with what we have and what does that look like? Is there an end state to development? Um, transitioning from a from a needs-based economy to an asset-based economic needs-based to asset-based economic development that's where i think the public art very much comes into play mm -hmm. you know that is an asset for this community and and so that that creates that sense of place and things that bring people to the community and and you know and helps to create you know an economic driver in and of itself um 
you know, how do we attract visitors, you know, you know without, and how do we grow without you know, really overwhelming, you know, the, the city itself without damaging what's, what's so unique about it. So those are, all those are pretty heavy questions. So we'll, uh, we'll go with the, uh, the consultants and see how, see how we do this. Um, the, the intent is that, again, that we're going to try to start marrying up our public outreach for the comprehensive plan with the, uh, excuse me, with the strategic plan. So don't know exactly what that's going to look like, but pay it, you know, again, keep in touch with that Connect Tarpon platform because that's where we'll be pushing these things out. We, we're on a fairly tight timeline. We've only got 18 months allotted for the comprehensive plan to get updated. So um, but we do know there will definitely be, you know, in-person charrettes. There will be online um, opportunities as well. So again, a lot of opportunity to engage the public. We did put out an initial survey on that Connect Tarpon Spring site. Um, this, and this was the, the question here that didn't, didn't get come through on this for some reason was thinking 30 to 40 years in the future, you know, what, what are the, which of the following issues do you think are the most important? And it was a, a ranking. And so the, I circled the ones there that have risen to the top. Um, you know, and there, so those are things like a walkable community, safe community, passive recreation, uh, sea level rise, land preservation, you know, maintaining our unique identity, preserving our history. You know, I think those two really speak again to you know, the impact that public art can have on, you know, with our, with our identity um, and, and the uniqueness of Tarpon Springs and, and how, we, how we keep maintaining that. Sustainability obviously was another big one that, was, that rose to the top. Mm -hmm. The survey's still active if you want to, and I you know, apologize that I was reading through this, I'm like, well, I didn't have anything specific to public art, but I think you know, maintaining the history and the uniqueness and the identity does get to a lot of the work that, that this committee does um, for the city. So this, this is, survey still live. If you want to go to the Connect Tarpon Springs um, website and take the survey, if you haven't already, uh, you do have to register, um, but it's pretty minimal registration requirement. We hope, you know, we're not like asking for, you know, blood samples or anything. <laughs> so hopefully uh, people won't be too turned off by that. Uh, but it does give us um, some analytical data on the back end for who's answering the surveys and things like that. So we do ask for that. So that's up. And, there, and there's also some open-ended questions about, you know, that are really interesting. I didn't, if you want, I can forward to you the latest, I can send it to Diane and she can send it out to you, the latest um, full results from this as well as the open-ended survey questions because they're very interesting um, you know, about what people, what people find you know, compelling about tarpon. What are the best things? What are the things that we need to, we need to work on? So there's a lot of good information in there. So to you, so, so, to the point of, I think, why you asked me, how does the master plan fit here? Um, as I read through the master plan um, you know, for public art, a few things kind of jumped out at me. Um, you have great goal statements, and I think those things very much need to be somehow brought into both of those, the strategic plan and the comprehensive plan. Now, I can definitely make sure it happens with the comprehensive plan, you know, at, you know and I think that the document itself, in whatever form it is, really needs to be a strong reference document for both plans. Um, so you know, we can work to that end. Some of the things that stood out um, in the history section, I, I really, again, I think we need to pull, you know, we being, you know, you know myself as the you know, staff support for you know, both of these plans, you know, more so with the comprehensive plan, but pulling some of those elements out and literally weaving them into some of our initiatives and goal statements and things in the comprehensive plan. Um, the contemporary design integrated public art, I thought was fantastic. Um, again, there's a very strong tie in there with land development activities. Um, and some of those things could really partner with sustainability committee initiatives. Cause I, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, we have to deal with sea, sea level rise, but I don't think anybody wants to see the city be seawalled, you know, <laughs> end to end. That's not what we're, you know, so and that's, it might be an extreme example, but there are ways that, you know, those things can take place that, that actually function as a public art type of, uh, of you know, project and, and integrating those elements in. So I think those are really interesting opportunities. Um, 
the the Black Heritage Project, again, I don't think that's very well recognized. Hopefully it's more recognized because you guys are, are putting an emphasis on it. But again, I think some of that history needs to be brought into, we have a historic resources element in the comp, in the comp plan. So a lot of this can be um, integrated into that element. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other focus areas that I'm trying to work on is, it, so just the current structure of the plan, the comprehensive plan is, it's pretty dry. You got, you know, 10, 11 elements that are, you have a future land use, you have a conservation element. What I really want to be able to do is, and we can do this now under the new growth man or the, the new community planning act with the state, they've loosened things up a bit. I really want to organize the plan around more around focus areas. And again, that's how it will tie back to the strategic plan. So that will make it a lot easier to weave things like public art into, you know, not just a smattering here or there, but uh, you know, almost maybe as a focus or a goal area. So we can look toward that end um, as well. Uh, let's see, what else? I think that's everything I wanted to cover. I don't have my, don't have a whole bunch of notes in front of me. So mm -hmm. um, do I have anything else here? No, I don't. Okay. Uh, I'll stop there and I'll be happy to answer questions. Hopefully this was somewhat informative for you. And mm -hmm. if not, I'll come back and try again. Mm -hmm. I have uh, one comment. Um, I was kind of hurt that our past public art projects weren't listed among our current successes. Under current successes on the, with the Board of Commissioners uh, engagement? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've I, well, really was, gotten a lot done in the past few years. Actually, you have, and I was at that session. I, I sat and listened to it. And so there's a lot that isn't reflected. If you if you go back to the, the actual real-time record, and you can get this on the website now, mm -hmm. you'll find a lot more detail on than just what's on that kind of that diagram that I included. Right. And, and I can definitely say that, I mean, public art was something that was discussed and was recognized. And, mm -hmm. I, you know, so I don't, don't feel bad that it's not up on that the green blob up there, but it, it was talked about. Yes, because we're very territorial. <laughs> Okay. The other thing, too, is if you could give some clarification on the strong tie-in with land development activities. So that was specific to the, you know, that contemporary design integrated public art. We don't have um, design criteria per se for, you know, other than normal things like setback requirements and things like that. And I think there's an opportunity to... Um, to push that a little bit with certain types of development projects that, you know, okay, if you're going to be, you know, if you've got to do a seawall for something or if you've got to, I think we can integrate some of those standards that you're looking for perhaps into some of those design standards. Um, I haven't thought through it much more than that, but when I read it, I, I thought that, you know, that there was an opportunity there. So mm -hmm. we can, we can look more to that. It's, it, it just those 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 initiatives seem to tie in with a lot of land development opportunity, you know, development opportunities that you see or development that will take place, whether it's public or private. So it's a, it's a balance, you know, trying to, you know, the public art. Pro oh, that's what I forgot to mention as well. The land development code public art program. Mm -hmm. I definitely want to go back into the comprehensive plan and set up enabling policies and things. We've never been challenged, but I want to make sure that stays that way. <laughs> so I, I think we do need to go back and get that into the comprehensive plan as go, as policy statement about the public art program and that's in the land development code. In other words, you you want to put some kind of guidelines as uh, yes. to what, what public art could be comprised of? It, it, at least get it, yeah, get some sort of policy statements in there that back up what is in the land development code. You know, it, it's... It's just normally, the normal course of business is, you know, you have your comprehensive plan, you establish your goals, objectives, and policies, and then your regulating plans implement those policies. And so the land development codes are regulating plan, the public art program is part of that, it's, it's in there. But we don't have a strong tie back to the comprehensive plan, really that's, that's, that speaks to why it's in the land development code. So that's, at least if it is, I haven't seen it. So I, that's something I'm going to, I'll, I'll look for it. But, and once we do the comprehensive plan update, the next thing that we will do will be follow on land development code you know, updates to make sure that anything that new that's been developed uh, or that needs to be addressed gets into the, to our land development codes as well. Mm -hmm.
Robert, I, did you, did I see your hand? Um, I don't know. I don't know if this is an appropriate question, but I was just thinking about the the uh, dealing with the land development um, and uh, strategically planning and looking forward. Does this mean that that uh, the public art budget and the strategic planning budgets could could meld together? In other words, you know, uh, money makes art, and a lot of these strategic plans we have here, what we could do <laughs> with, uh, say, dealing with, um, high, you know, high water rising and things, how we could deal with an, a contemporary art, art artistic way, um, if, if that could be integrated into the budgets that goes into uh, not seawalls, but, but treating something mm -hmm. that, that is very creative and mm -hmm. probably expensive. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the intent with the strategic plan, it does become a document that should be guiding budget. So to that end, you know, if certain elements get into the strategic plan, then there should be a flow somewhere in the pipeline for budgeting to support the things that are in that strategic plan. Yeah, yeah. I think I think what I'm talking about too is that that before the seawall is designed for right. 3.6 million dollars, right. then all of a sudden let's make an art piece out of it. Here's 250 dollars. Right. Right. So that's that's a thing where where the, the amount of art going into a big infrastructure sometimes is minuscule, but it's right. multiple times more than a piece of art would be without that infrastructure right. project. Right. Okay, so it, it would be money placed in the right place. So strategically mm -hmm. thinking about this is that if these budgets were merged a little bit more, I don't know about control and stuff like that, but the, the, am I making sense here? No, no you are. It, it's, you know, it's, it's getting the, the money budgeted at the right point in time, I think is what you're really trying, trying to end. So, and that's where, you know, having those, you know, having those goal statements and focus areas, you know, in the, you know, in the strategic plan, is that's where that, why that's important. And that's why I'm encouraged when you see in those, for what do we see as future successes? You know, public art's right up there in that list, and you know more public art, and so you know that should drive some things. You know that are that that it, that arise to the top and get the projects that get into the strategic plan. Um, you know, and I think that's why one of the things I had up here was partnering with the sustainability committee initiatives because I think there's a lot of overlap between you know between those two. Um, Especially with regard to sea level rise, and so you know, I think I think it's an interesting opportunity. I don't I don't have a lot more you know thoughts in my frontal lobe here about it, other than it struck me as there's got to be a way to, to you know to capitalize on the initiatives of both. And I think you're getting it kind of what I'm talking about. If we're gonna if we're gonna look at trying to you know look at Whitcomb Bayou and what that's gonna look like from a 30, 40, 50 year horizon. You know, it shouldn't be a you know a terribly difficult task to at least consider how can we integrate some sort of public art into it on the front end, not like you said at the back end. So, you know, that's my that's that's my pipe dreams. Whether or not that comes to reality or fruition, I you know we'll we'll have to see. Uh, Lucien, in that regard, I wonder if our ordinance needs a little broadening because. I think it's pretty specific to the funding of public art projects. Mm -hmm. It by is developers, and mm -hmm. really, it ought to be a more global consideration. And that, that's something that you might want to put on some sort of a work plan, you know, moving forward. Is you know, is looking at it, looking at it in that context. So yeah, I think you're absolutely right. It is. It's it's pretty narrowly focused, um, but how that money can be used, how it can be programmed. Um, that's something that I think you know probably does need to be you know evaluated a little more. I haven't delved too deep into the to that looked at that code section in depth recently, um, but yeah, definitely I think that's something that probably needs to be. There's an opportunity there. I have an, a question that's just my lack of understanding of planning. Is the overarching document the land development? code or is it the comp plan? It should be the comprehensive plan. 
I say it should be. Health plan, <laughs> then, land, then, the, then our land development codes. And then strategic plan. Um, the strategic plan I'll put out here on, on the side. I, I put the, the strategic plan and the comprehensive plan a, a little more side by side. Um, the strategic plan really is going to be a document that's uh, five to seven year horizon, and it's going to be probably more, um, uh, more project driven you know, uh, in, in terms of in using it as a budgeting document, whereas the comprehensive plan is a much longer horizon. And so the strategic plan should be responding to what's in the comprehensive plan. The land development codes are more of that bottom regulatory document that everything has to meet. So, you know, they shouldn't be at odds with each other. Sometimes they are, but, you know, so just think, think of the comp plan and the strategic plan as kind of side by side, one with a very long range vision one with a shorter range. So this one's going to be a little more driven by project driven. This is going to be a little more policy driven, but they should have that common common goal between them with those those core focus areas. And that's that's you know, that actually will be kind of unique if we pull that off, but I'm hoping that we can so that that, that they do talk to each other and it's recognized that these are both, you know, equally applicable to guiding documents for the city. Thank you. You're welcome. Bill, do you have any no, just excited to see the some sort of integration with with infrastructure projects because mm -hmm. it's a great mm -hmm. way for us to, as I think Robert mentioned, to mm -hmm. really get a bang for the buck. Mm -hmm. uh, when when the work's going to be done, you know what what can we do to enhance that? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that that would be exciting. Yeah. Trish, David. So, <clears throat> to me, it sounds like these plans have some restrictions coming to the art committee. Is that correct? Is it restrictions? Kind of like how everything needs to be planned out. I don't. Th I wouldn't use the term restrictions. What? Or what regulations, I'm, so to speak. What? Changes. So the both the, you know the comprehensive plan really is a, is a big. It's a policy document, and so you want you know, for things for the for the long range look. You know you want policies in place that speak to so in regard to public art. I'm not thinking about, I, I'm, I'm racking my brain, but I don't think there's a real emphasis anywhere in the conference and plan about, you know, the importance of public art. And so that, I think, needs to be corrected. Mm -hmm. And that, that establishes, you know, once you kind of have that policy in there, then the regulatory things and the, and the more project-driven things like the strategic plan should be responding to that. So it, that, it's a bit of a hierarchy there. Um, I'm not sure I answered your question. I went off on a tangent. Kind, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. I'm sorry. Right, and it's okay. It just sounded to that this plan is going to have some type of regulations on how or where the art committee puts their funds and then perhaps I, how the art looks in the city. Mm, I wouldn't go that scope. far, no. I wouldn't go that far. The, you know, the, the, I think, you know, it would, you know, it's, it's up to this committee and, and, you know, I can state fairly with a fair amount of certainty that the master plan that you have or whatever iteration of it at a minimum is going to become a reference document for the comprehensive plan. I'd like to see a little more stronger tie in and pulling in some of those things um, that are a little more visionary and getting those things worked into other elements of the plan. Um, but the, the the regulatory aspects of how something would look. I mean, we I, we would never go there in the comprehensive plan. You know, the the land development code regulations now for um, you know for public art are they're fairly narrow. As you know, what what can be done? Obviously, this board has to approve if it's actually going to be a a project to be built. Otherwise, they pay in, and then you you guys administer those funds. Um, I think you may be talking about when I was talking about with the contemporary design integrated public art and how that ties in with can tie in with land development. That's something we need to take a little bit deeper look at. Is there an opportunity there for public and private projects to you know to specify that if you have certain elements, you at least need to to consider you know maybe a, you know some sort of public art integrated with them. I need to educate myself a little more on that, but I think there's an opportunity there. Okay. I think that answered that question. Okay. Um, I might go on my scope a little bit. Um, Tyndale Oliver, is that a development company? 
Tyndall Oliver is, they do only public sector work. They don't do private development. Like, so a lot of, a lot of, a lot of consulting companies kind of have a foot in both worlds. They're out here building, working with developers, but they also do work for cities. Tyndall Oliver is purely a public entity in that, that they do not do developer work. And have they done previous work in this county? Oh yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, Tyndall Oliver, they're, they're very well known. They're a very reputable um, land planning company. Um, I've had no hesitation about utilizing so them. Do they also plan like resurfacing of buildings or anything of that nature? I don't know that they get into that type of of work. They are they're more of a you know an urban planning driven um, company that really focuses on you know they do a lot of community redevelopment area plans, comprehensive plans, um, updating land development regulations. So they're very much in that world. So basically, like the logistics, not the appearances. Correct. Correct. Okay. Um, is there anything in this plan to to uh, resurface any buildings or any appearance? Resur I guess to the what buildings are you talking about? Uh, like the buildings on Alt Nineteen. I didn't know if there was a plan to do anything with the city like that. Um, Maybe update the city a bit to bring it together. Not not in terms of you know I'm, I'm resurfacing buildings. If you're talking about you know not from a public perspective. I mean, certainly private development may, you know, may do that. Uh, Manatee Village is a good example. They're going to be, you know, basically retrofitting that, that shopping center and updating the look of it. Mm -hmm. um, but there's not, there's nothing, um, nothing like that would really fall into the realm of the, of the, of the comp plan, I don't think. We do have the facade grant. We have the, yeah, we have the facade grant program in the community redevelopment area. Um, as well as down in the sponge docks, so that which is a grant opportunity that uh, it's usually geared more toward historic buildings, um, but doesn't have to be. I don't think for for the docks. I don't yeah, think it I has think to be. So. Um, that yes, you can get a matching grant from the city, from the community development area fund, or for uh, I think the general fund dollars are set aside as well for that for for the for the docks since they're not in CRA. That you know, you put in a certain amount, the city matches it up to a maximum, and you can use that to uh, do exterior building improvements and improve the look of the buildings. Okay, because we can probably all agree that Alternate 19 <laughs> kind of looks like US 19, you know. It, yeah, there's a, there's so. plenty of opportunity there. <laughs> <laughs> opportunity. There's lots of opportunity. Right. right. And Seriously, well, and if it, it looked that um, good. Yeah, I mean, one section of Alt 19 is in the community redevelopment area, so from. I'll say from Tarpon out. No, it goes farther south than that. It goes down to Mirrors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it goes all the way down to Mirrors. So there is an opportunity there um, inside that, that community redevelopment area boundary um, where facade grants are available for people, you know, for business owners to take advantage of. So it's it's more, you'll see it more often in like Tarpon Ave in that area, but it, it's actually been pretty well utilized. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's dependent on the, the property owner. It, the property it. owner has to make a has to apply for it. Yes, so okay. the city doesn't mandate it. No. Um, one more question is: There's a lot of talk about the sea level rise, mm -hmm. and kind of out of the scope. I mean, it has nothing to do with art, but has that been calculated? And um, what is the rise currently calculated per year? Is that a thing? It is a thing. Um, it's outside <laughs> the realm of my expertise. But if you go to Pinellas County. I think if you Google Pinellas County, uh, their GIS system, they have some very good public-facing sea level rise information that's based on the latest and greatest data from uh, National Oceanographic um, Administration. So they've got good sea level rise data on the Pinellas County GIS website that you can delve into. You know, it's, you know they have the they have the you know the short, mid, and long range, and then they have the the low, mid, and high estimates. Um, and so you can kind of see where where the city ends up with those various layers of data. Okay, because Florida was underwater at one time, so I want to know if it's and coming. <laughs> or not, you, know, you need to be ready. So. I mean, historically, yes. I mean, you can, you know, the tide gauges from just some, from St. Pete are a fairly good indicator, and and there's, we definitely have, you know, sea level rise happening. Well, whatever's causing it, <laughs> I guess, is up for debate. But right. there's no doubt that looking at past data. Um, it is happening, you know, does that trend continue? Uh, well, that's, 
above my pay grade right now. <laughs> All right, thank you, Ms. Wilson. Appreciate that. Debbie? Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate you coming and taking the time to explain this to us, um, but I feel as if the Public Art Committee has missed the boat on not being on the comprehensive plan, which is a long-term plan. I won't say you've missed the boat. It's not in there now. Mm -hmm. But this up, we're just starting the, the comprehensive plan update, so you will, you will have opportunities to have your voice in, in that update of the comprehensive plan. And certainly, this is not the only master plan that will probably, it'll, at a minimum, be a reference document. We have stormwater action plans. The Sustainability Action Committee is developing a sustainability plan. All those things really, you know, ideally will be reference documents at a minimum. And then things that are extremely important get into the goals, objectives, and policies itself of the comp plan. Okay. Thank you. So I hope you don't feel like you the, the ship left without you. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the past, but we'll get there. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? Any other comments? Renee, thank you very much for coming in and making Most your welcome. presentation. I think it was very enlightening. Um, all have to the, get more on your radar screen. <laughs> thank, no, absolutely. Um, all the real-time records for the strategic plan are are posted, so if you want to take a deeper dive into those, I would encourage you to, as well as looking at the comp plan site. Mm -hmm. um, and just kind of stay tuned. We'll, uh, and I'll come back anytime you like. I, okay. You know, so. Great, right. thank you. You're thank welcome. Thank you, Renee. Thank you. I don't know if I can turn this off or not. Okay. Um, old business, the Girl Scout Ambassador Troop 1142 Public Art Projects. Uh, Diane, I believe you were in touch <clears throat> with the troop leader? Yes. Um, I reached out to her to see what progress they had made and uh, because school is now back in session and uh, she said that um, they had their two sites selected and they did that with uh, Public Works um, and then um, they're in the process of purchasing their paints and I also asked her if she had a like a, a version of what they were going to paint in those lo two locations. Mm. And she said they were working on it, and as soon as they had something, they would uh, share it with us. So, Great. they're you know, school just started, so they're kind of in still planning mode and stuff. Okay. So, Right, and just a reminder, um, we approved a uh, $500 um, grant to them for, mm -hmm. for their materials. Uh, many of which could be reused, things like safety vests and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. May uh, I ask a question? Sure. So when you have um, a project grant given, do, what is their time limit on that? And do they provide a, a follow-up report on how everything, the monies were utilized and, and the outcome? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Is well, there a we'll, time we'll limit get on them. that? Well, not really. This well, this was kind of dependent on the school mm -hmm. school year, and things have been kind of topsy turvy with COVID. Mm -hmm. But uh, they came and made what I considered probably one of the more professional oh, presentations. Yes. They did it. it was. Yeah. But uh, you know, given the fact, you know, as I said, COVID and the school, you know, school mm -hmm. thing. Uh, but it's a very worthwhile project, and. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as I said, Diane's been following up with the troop leader, but they will give us a detailed invoice mm -hmm. and, you know, draft designs and things like that. And so. they did say that they probably, you know, instead of accepting the $500 and just going with it, they're going to, they said they'll probably be able to save us money by, you know, mm -hmm. buying the supplies and then sending us an invoice for payment. So that was good. I think they're a great I kind group. of women. <laughs> <laughs> Always bargain shopping. <laughs> Okay, the Tarpon Springs High School mural project, Sunset Beach. Um, and again, that was defer deferred until the fall, and again, that's kind of dependent on the school year. Uh, I, Diane? I just got um, from Chief um, Young, I did get an update just recently. Um, he did talk to the principal, and at one point they were looking for students to participate. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have eight students that are interested in doing the mural and so um, the principal asked you know if uh, we could meet you know with the students and just kind of give them an overview of it and everything mm -hmm. so I, I I told Chief Young that since he was you know kind of he's our sort of yeah, liaison yeah, person. so yeah. that you know whatever he was available and everything and that if he'd like me to go along I you know would would do that you know kind of thing but 
we have the site and everything. It's so it's not really going to be that difficult. I think right. it's just that I think they just wanted a little bit of an overview because there are eight new students that are going to be participating Fantastic. in it. Yeah. Yeah. So great. Well, I'll let you know when we get that coordinated. Okay. Thanks for the update. <laughs> sure. Okay. Sports field mural project. Bill and David, you're up. <laughs> Batter up. <laughs> you want to go first? <laughs> Do we still have any of the images that we had? Because I thought you... We, we do, and I think the last time we met back in August, we're going to... Right, I started playing with them, but I... Yeah. I only have paint on my computer, so I can't... Yeah. When I did that, it was it was very crude. <laughs> really crude, and, and a little scary when I put the primary colors on, on the building there at uh, Riverside. So a couple of folks were going to play with it and see what they might be able to, to come up with on that. Mm -hmm. um, it, we do have locations for the art boxes, so I just need to know if we want to pursue that and how many we want to put over there, and then how we want to populate those art boxes with what kind of art, whether they would be, maybe it's an opportunity for student art, maybe mm -hmm. it's an opportunity for, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, uh, I think we need a couple of those things, and I just need some guidance uh, David and I went out and looked, and, and there's some nice locations that we could put those those art boxes. Mm -hmm. um, again, I think we're still looking for opportunities to do something other than murals. Yes. The murals are fantastic. They're a low-hanging fruit. I think they're wonderful. Um, but I'd love to see us mm -hmm. get some other forms of art um, out along some of those, mm -hmm. those locations. I kind of like the idea of tying the art into all the buildings to make them kind of seem as one. Mm -hmm. um, I know the one that I did was kind of rudimentary and it had some crazy symbolism on the side, but something that has not like new age, but something that is kind of more 2D and it's not too abstract, I thought might not look like a sore thumb sticking out, but mm -hmm. still kind of push what we're trying to achieve here. Right. But what that looks like, I don't, I don't really know. If right. And each one of the parks has a specific sport or two that, right. that, that mm -hmm. really function there. So I, I think there's opportunities to, you know, to tie them all together, but also give them that individual, you know, identity as, as to what sport right. they, they highlight. Right. Um, and I had a conversation with uh, Mark LaCorris, and he, he seemed to think that we were going to need the approval of some of the league captains. And um, I, I don't know, you know, I mean, that's kind of opening a, a, a Pandora's box to some extent right. because I, I think, you know, your concept of, you know, uniformity but not, you know, like tailoring things for the individual sports but having some kind of thematic approach to yeah. everything like the background of the uh, of the murals being yeah. primary colors so that would right. tie everything in right and i think the other thing too is um bill's suggestion about the art boxes i think what we what we should do is you know since you've already looked into it uh maybe give us an idea as to the dimensions of the art boxes you know, whether they want the 30 by 30s like we have on the docks or something smaller might work. I think we have, what, four that yeah, are... Yeah, I think there were, there were like five, 18 by 18, five. 24 we by... We have five left. Five left. Oh, yes. Oh, the 30 I, by 30s. I, what I, would, use I would use the ones that we have because right. I think there's opportunities mm -hmm. based on the, the yeah, locations that David and I looked at. I right. think you could make make that work. Some of them you're not going to be able to use the solar right. uh, because we've got tree coverage. Yeah, that was my next question. That, yeah. yeah. So that's the only issue that we would probably have is some of them are going to need to be powered. So would, right. we, would we put them on existing posts or would we have to purchase posts? I think there's existing location or existing things to hang them, mm -hmm. anchor them to. Okay. Now, again, that would all have to be vetted through public works to mm -hmm. make sure that... You know, right. Um, yeah, the other thing, too, is uh, the... Um, Hardwired boxes are significantly cheaper than the solar powers, and they, they will just tie into existing light fixtures. So that's, that's another consideration. Mm -hmm. So maybe... Uh, I might have to go on a canvassing trip with you guys <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> to kind of see which ones you picked. 
Right. You know, kind of thing. Okay. Right. The other, the other, excuse me, the other consideration, too, for the art boxes is the 30 by 30s are extremely heavy. Yeah. So if we get a smaller one that's lighter, maybe we can put them on the, you know, the acorn lights or the, you know, the historic poles. Yeah. So maybe, you know, uh, as I said, Dan, you know, Diane said, go on a canvassing trip and, you know, maybe make a little graph of hard wire and size and we can get a good idea. Okay. Also, I call them parking bollards, whatever you want to call them. It's mm -hmm. just where there's an opportunity to do something. They're all, they're all like white right now. Mm -hmm. and, just, and, and I think someone with an artistic, you know, <laughs> talent might be able to, you know, <laughs> come up with something unique to do with them. And again, we're only looking at Sisler and Riverside. So, I mean, there's, there's tons of opportunities here with the other parks. You just have to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. And those are two great ones to, and I know we have a, one to talk about here on the. All right. Mm -hmm. um, Lucy Ann, you look like you've got some Always. comments. Always, yes. Always. <laughs> um, I love it. I'd like to go back to the proposal that Robert made of using the primary colors on various walls and then um, personalizing those to each field by a silhouette of some sort. And if you look at this new design for Sisler, mm -hmm. I think you see the impact mm -hmm. of okay. what that could be. You get a lot of bang you do. from it. Um, right. Can we jump to that I, proposal since you've brought it up? And, and, I, and I'm sorry to mix those two. But no, 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 but they're, they're I, relevant. They together, yeah. yeah, they're it relevant. It jumped out at me, and I think the iconic silhouette for Riverside against a blue wall or a... Yep. Mm -hmm. a red wall or a yellow wall. Um, I think this is a great test case of that mm -hmm. uh, design concept, and it's it's unifying. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question <coughs> about the uh, of the cost? I would just, that just struck me as thirteen fifty. Um, the artist fees a thousand. Is our limit for the total thing, or is it in is it like for the artist, and we pay additional? amounts for the supplies. Well, that's been kind of the precedent because the $1,000 fee allows her to be considered um, a uh, uh, the, the subcontractor. So right. that's why that's why the fees are kept at 1,000 so that she can be covered under the city's liability umbrella. Okay. So so the supplies are not included there. Correct. Extra from, <clears throat> from Right. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. my question. Okay. Right. Yeah. It's the it's $1,000 <coughs> flat fee to keep her in that, uh, or keep the artist in, in that, right. uh, so, yeah. So I got a question. So going off the primary colors, you know, this is green. I have seen yellow softballs. Mm -hmm. So would we want to do this in yellow to start it and see how it looks? I think it is supposed to be yellow. This is just a copier. Okay. Yeah, it, because she does understand the color of the softballs. Well, there is neon green. There is neon oh, green okay. also. Oh, well, and I like true. it, but it yeah. good. it's great with the, 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 um, the stitching. I think it looks great. Yeah. yeah, okay. Do you agree on that, Mr. Sackhouse? Um, yeah. Any primary color is fine, mm -hmm. but uh, green is not a primary color. It's a secondary <laughs> right. color. Exactly. <laughs> but, but other than that, I mean, uh, you know, a, a solid block of color with an icon on it, uh, and this does show what would happen. I think I think the design's a little busy. I don't think it needs to be that busy on all these. I think all the bases. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I think uh, you know the the figures themselves would hold. I have some issues with the figures themselves. So, uh, I don't know if anybody else does. Maybe we, yes. Yeah, you, you have the same issue I have. Maybe I don't I've know. driven up and down Route 19 a couple of times, and <laughs> there's some, you know, uh, nighttime establishments that have. <laughs> I mean that's sort of that's sort of the thing I'm I'm looking at a little bit a little modification I don't know whether we if that's in our purview or what <laughs> I'm just thinking too what uh, boys would do with their graffiti um, I you know I I like them I think they're just you know there, there's a little bit more consideration there I uh, I think the the uh, bat swinger is is very appropriate for this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that would be great. I don't think you need any more. That gets the whole idea across. This is what this is. The uh, women's softball player. 
I will say that I did send uh, this to the president of the uh, Tarpet Springs Little League um, and also uh, the one who's in charge of, from the board of directors, in charge of uh, softball. And the president um, of the board loved it. Mm -hmm. So that was, and she thought that that, you know, was going to be good for, you know, all the kids. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I'm sure we can modify it, but I was just want you to know that they approved, you know. Okay. It, well, that's a good know. place to start. The other, the other question that I had is that that short wall that faces the street always, it looks like that should be added in somehow, you know, like wrapped around. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, even even I if agree. even if it's painted the, the base color, mm -hmm. you know, just, just to tie in the building. Otherwise, it looks kind of and strange. The front of the building is a concession stand, correct? Yeah. So that should also be... Um, painted. Yeah, that's what, you know, because yeah. right now... So even if you do one side white and the other side chartreuse, mm -hmm. just so that there's some sort of... Yeah, continuity on continuity the building. Continuity yeah. and a fresh coat. Or even if it just ran around the corner, like you were saying, the right. stitching on one side and maybe, mm -hmm. you know, the balls on the other, mm -hmm. they kind of wrap around the corners just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I don't know, I like the design. Yeah. It's striking. Mm -hmm. I do. I like it. My and my only concern it's was the <laughs> was the gal that's doing the catching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Her foot's either on backwards. But I'm, I'm sure <laughs> she can. She, when she gets the painting, she can paint it straight. <laughs> no, it's she. You're actually looking at her, and that's why her feet are pointed towards you. But when I first looked at it, I saw it from the back end. I was like, well, that doesn't look right. I do right. see that now. You yeah. see that now, I do right? See that now, yeah. And then I was like, well, they put her foot on backwards. And then. Um, it's like an optical illusion. It is. It, it, it is. keeps going back and forth. You no, know, and I'm sure that she can make some modifications one. to it. And I hope nobody takes into <laughs> account that they're all lefties, that that would be an issue. Unless she's facing that way. No, I mean, she actually she's is. She's mitted on the on the right and got the left hand up to catch. So you're actually seeing right, her face. Right, because she's facing you. Yeah. But if she but was facing I, away, she'd be. Right yeah, there. but I don't. It's her foot in the wrong. Her foot is right. Also, she's a little bit out of scale with her. She is. Hand. Yes. She's a lot bigger than the other two. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that you know that can be adjusted when right. she actually does mm -hmm. the painting. Sure. Right. <clears throat> I think maybe if she leaves a little areas in there for highlighting, <coughs> that it'll show her position a little bit better and not make us think we're looking at the back end of her. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> that's how I saw it to begin with. And when we I have to remember that these are young yeah. artists. They're not. Yeah. Uh, they're not a Robert Stackhouse. <laughs> <Right>. so, <laughs> but I, I, I do appreciate the, um, the the scale kind of thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, she I, needs I, to be made smaller. Mm -hmm. But you know. Does anybody think that the um, picture needs to be a little bigger? A tad, a drop. Anybody getting the picture? The picture. The picture. picture. Oh, the picture. The In picture. the middle. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. she could be. I, I think the batter is 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 a nice scale. Right, and somebody has, um, or somebody inquired about the whether boys and girls play softball, mm -hmm. and an easy fix to that if boys do play is just to uh, eliminate the ponytail on the batter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Or we can make it an optical illusion whether there's a ponytail or not. There you go. <laughs> could do that. Hey, boys wear ponytails. That's true. <laughs> You're right. You could You're put right. it in a bun. Yeah. Well, I think it's not an easy thing. Everybody, likes baseball. Baseball. <laughs> everybody watch baseball sure. lately. I know. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and football. Everybody's looking a little uh, mm -hmm. yeah. long in the lock. I do like it. Uh, would we want to do the primary? Start off with the primary colors on this building. Well, Diane, you said it was yellow, right? No, no, no. I, I, I agree. I, now that she said that, because the original one that she did was kind of a yellow. She used the yellow ball, mm -hmm. and now this one, since she said that there is yeah. a, that a green right. softball, then that's probably what she intended. So, 
Yeah. I kind of, I kind of like it the way it is if the figures are adjusted well, for scale. But the whole point is to make it authentic for the softball players. So if we can't right. go to primary colors for this building, right? And and you know you said that they they already like it. So <clears throat> uh, you know I don't want to get them all twisted either. I mean I think she would be willing to. I mean if you like the general design, you know I think she would be willing to you know make them all the same scale as far as. Or even eliminate one. It's you know right because it it, she's, it does say it's a digital mock up, so I'm sure she can yeah I'm you know tweak it tweak it a little bit. Well, I'm, wonder, I'm wondering if the center figure was supposed to be in say far away, which makes her smaller looking. That, that's sort far of a away catching the ball. Yeah, that's sort of a confusing message. Though, it is, is that it uh, is. you're trying to put some <coughs> iconic, iconic silhouettes into a real life. Mm -hmm. uh, but. I think she struggled a little bit with this one because I had asked her, like, when I sent out your original, you know, information like a week ago, right. I had asked her for it, and, uh, and she's, you know, she says, I'll get it to you today. It's like, I said, well, I don't want you to rush it. I said, mm -hmm. if so, I said, I could use, take it as a handout, you know, kind of thing. So mm -hmm. she sent it to me yesterday. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. All right. So, um... Uh, do, do can we, I get a? Oh, go ahead, Robert. I, I was just gonna say, do we have any kind of say on on what the finished product would be? Other is, do we have the authority to say that we, we <coughs> should, should do this a little differently? Is that something in our purview as a as an art committee? Yeah, I think we can suggest to the artist. I mean, we need to yeah. see. Do we need to see her final presentation where she's got it all tweaked out? Uh, um, in other words. This is what we're going to see. We're, we're going to see on this piece of paper something that we're going to go to Sisler Field and see. In other words, this is, this is a... Uh, I've, I've been stung by judging many art shows <laughs> where I have to judge by pieces right. of paper and photographs. Okay. And uh, when you get there, it's not that at all. Right. right? So, and, and as you say, she, if she's a young artist, uh, she probably needs to give us a really good good uh, mock-up of what this is going to be. Okay. Yeah. Diane, can you ask her to, to make the tweaks we suggested? And if she could email you the digital um, adaptation and ask her about painting the, the side of the building also. could just be flat or maybe just put some of the, the, the stitching. The and, uh, you know, uh, Email it to us so we can get an idea. So uh, the only tweak you're asking for is to have all the silhouettes the same size. <laughs> is that correct? Well, I, I I think Robert's got the right idea. The center figure should probably be the the larger one, and the the catcher on the left should be made smaller. Does everybody mm -hmm. kind of agree with that? Anybody yeah. have any? Yeah, I think the one on the right is okay. Yeah, she just needs to make the others. Yeah, I think the batter's scale. fine. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that same scale as the batter. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if, if she just put this together pretty quickly, she didn't have time to really look at it and go back and say, I need to adjust this and adjust mm -hmm. that. I mean, making art's a process, and, and this is the first step in the process, and we're all interested in it. Mm -hmm. You know, she could uh, work on it a little bit more for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the budget's certainly well in line. Mm -hmm. You know, with mm -hmm. with you know what we want to spend, you know, staying within that, uh, you know, thousand dollar parameter. And she did a nice job with the last one, with mm -hmm. the, with, with the uh, drawing that she submitted to us and the the final piece mm -hmm. on the building. Yeah. I, I was impressed. Mm -hmm. Right. To, to Robert's point, sometimes <coughs> you don't get what you mm -hmm. that, you know expecting, but uh, I thought it looked. Okay. So uh, no. I don't think we need. Oh, I'm sorry, Bill. No, just going forward with with the rest of the parks. You know, you know, Diane and and David and I meet and take a look at where to put the. Uh, um, I'll have to make boxes, sure that I have to do if I can do it with. I think I can do it with both of you at the same time. Yeah, it's information gathering, isn't it? I'll check it out. <laughs> yeah. And is it possible for someone who does have Photoshop or something a little bit more sophisticated than my paint? To, to look at the, the one photo that we have at the building there at Riverside um, and maybe come up with a kind of an idea so that we know 
the, what the primary colors would look like. Uh, what are they? JPEG? Did you send us JPEGs? Is that what yeah, they have? Yeah, uh, I think Marissa downloaded them on her laptop yes, from the thumb drive, right. so she's got all the images. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I meant to do it, and it just. Yeah. How's that primary color going to look? Is it going to be all four walls? Well, that's I wall? played around with it. Again, it was so crude that it, right. it was hard for me to get a feel for it, but it, it, it didn't look good with well, what I did. Well, but, the, uh, the, the thing about the, the primary colors is that the red, yellow, and blue, and they're, they make up all colors. So they're going to clash with each other, and they're going to make sense with each other mm -hmm. in, in some respects. So if you do one facade in red, you do another facade in blue and you do the other facade in yellow or whatever so you just take the cube you take a cube which is what a building is and one wall's one color and you paint it up to the edge that solid color and then you paint the other wall that solid color what what you're doing basically is you're painting the building you're not making art on the you know you're not making art this way mm -hmm. right. but you're making art another way and, and it, they could exist as, the, uh, as themselves because you're going to have a series of, uh, I mean, go to a kid's toy store, you know, and, and look, at, look at blocks and things like that. They're, they're quite often painted this way. They're very primary color and, and sharp edges and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that could be. You could say, well, here is your surface muralist. Do something on this. You know, you, you've got a corner that's red and you've got a, you know, one wall that's red and one wall that's yellow. What are you going to do with that if you want to go from one, you know, one wall to the other wall, if you want to wrap around it? Whatever. You're giving them uh, a, a kind of a starting point uh, if you want to do a mural on it, if you want to do something else on it, or whether this would suffice mm -hmm. as, as a look. You know, it, it would be... Um, a, a very contemporary, although the image I'm getting is from uh, about the 1920s. But <laughs> anyway, it's 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 a kind of a, a you know a very formalist way of approaching things, and and uh, it's something that could be done, I think, relatively inexpensively, and not necessarily. You don't need to really need an artist for doing it. You have mm -hmm. three colors, and you have four walls. <laughs> right. See, that's. You know, I, I guess I'm struggling with this a little because I think you said it yourself. It's really, it's art, but it's not. It, it just sounds like a paint job, and I don't know if people would That's be happy with that. That's what it is. That's exactly what it is. But and does it fit with the history and the look of Tarpon Springs? Well, what is that? It's, yeah. it's more, it's, I don't know, I think that's what everybody's been... You know, yeah, I know teams have colors. Yeah. It, it creates, like, an identity for the fields. Yeah. Um... Uh, I don't know. It's up to you. Maybe, maybe we need to reach out to to the uh, the league people. Well, I, I, again, well, I, yeah, I go back to if someone can in Photoshop do it so that we have a visual of it, mm -hmm. uh, that this is perhaps what it would look like. I think it would help, you know, all of right, us. Right. Yeah. To, it's to hard really to envision. Go, right. Yeah, that works. Or no, I think we ought to adjust a little bit, and whatever that adjustment may may need to be. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I just need someone to take the image and, and kind of... I could right. try to... Just Has anybody seen these uh, kind of contemporary plastic-built children's parks and, you know, playgrounds and parks? Sure. They're made out of primary colors mm -hmm. and secondary colors. And uh, they're just a lot of different straight color. Mm -hmm. This part's this color, that part's the other color and stuff. Yeah. And it, it's sort of that kind of thing. And they're always very cheerful. And, and uh, it... It's not making a statement about anything. Um, you know, the person putting something on that could make a statement about it, could re refer it. But mm -hmm. being color coordinated, I mean, uh, what do you do with, with teams that are camouflage color? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so um, there, everybody's got different kind yeah. of color stuff. So, so it's, not, it's not team or sport related. It's, it's uh, creating a place. Mm -hmm. And creating that place is bright colors. And bright colors usually sort of says uh, uh, happy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so a happy place, and it's clean and it's uh, colorful and it's not drabby white or or beige or pale blue or something like that. It's it's it it is a statement of color um, that could be citywide, could spread beyond mm -hmm. that, and. Uh, 
it's just, it, you know, it's not much different if you think of it. In Dunedin, they have those little, one of those little stickers, or somebody paints a little. Uh, oh, the oranges. Yeah, 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 a little orange on people's houses and stuff. You know, you see them around. They're sort of stealthy and stuff. And this could be something. I mean, you know, somebody said, "Look for that when you're in Dunedin the next time." So yeah, that, we had a, that, we had a presentation to yeah. do mangroves. <coughs> to yeah. do a similar project with mangroves. Yeah, but they don't have to be objects so much as, right. as the color itself could be could be the statement. But that's all I'm saying. And it, it's, it's a concept, and I, I agree with you, Billy. We need a picture of it. I am not a, I'm the last person in the world to, to think of uh, Photoshop mm -hmm. and, and do that. But um, maybe, uh, I, I don't know. I'll take a crack at it. I but will too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's just but I, I, I don't think there's any, you know, <laughs> you know he's talking about. <laughs> yeah. You know, just one can, wall is one yeah. color and the next wall is another color and they're, they're no shading, nothing. Just uh, Okay. I like the primary colors. I just feel like it could turn into almost like it look like a daycare almost to me. Somewhat. Uh, yes. uh, right. But that is sort of the thing. You know, this is an athletic field and it is youth athletics and uh, and uh, it's you know, it, it, it's good enough for the Museum of Modern Art. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, they have a lot of this color, things with this color. Mm -hmm. uh, painting the size of this wall called Who's Afraid of, Afraid of Red, Yellow, and Blue? And it's red, yellow, and blue. Yeah, and it's, it's a major painting that they have there. And uh, so, it's my, I'm, I'm on a soapbox, I'm sorry, stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I guess, I don't think we need uh, any kind of motions or seconds for any of this. Um, although, um, Maybe I'll, I'll get a motion for uh, the uh, softball mural at Sisler um, to uh, approve it pending uh, the revised design from the artists yeah. and approving the uh, dollar amount. Uh, can I get a motion to that effect? I make a motion. Okay. Can I second, yes. David? All in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Okay, uh, that passes. Um, Okay, if we can get past the sports fields, anybody mm -hmm. else have any anything? Okay, the illuminated art boxes. Uh, the second round images were submitted to the printer, and um, a plan is in place to remove the existing final panels from one side of the boxes, uh, either east or west facing, so that the boxes aren't empty. Uh, coordinate the delivery of the panels to the printer who will remove the existing decals and replace with the new images. Panels will be delivered to Public Works who will sim simultaneously replace the new panels while removing the existing panels and the process will be repeated. I think that minimizes the, um, you, know, the you know, the amount of work that has to be done by Public Works. Do we have a time on that? Uh, the the all the images are with the printer, so it was you know just a matter of coordinating this. So, Diane, did I, you? I did talk to Tom Function, and um, based on what they're doing, he he felt like it would they wouldn't be able to do it before October first. Yeah, so that's it's not right around the corner. That's probably that's kind of the year mark of when they went up. Mm -hmm. So I mean, we have to you know we can't overly burdened Tom and his crew. I mean, they do a fantastic job. Well, there's been a lot of people out, you know. Sure. So. Yeah, no, I, we, uh, we appreciate what he does for us, so I don't, I don't think, you know. Yeah. But, it, you know, it's in the works. The, the, you know, the images were all selected, processed. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, Alan picked them up, the printer, so he's probably... You and know, I, I, I did send uh, Joe, him and Joe Wraith your, you know, the the process, so mm -hmm. they're aware, you know, kind of thing. So they'll right. get it on their schedule. They said. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, if if they have to take them all out at once, if that makes their life easier, so be it. I just didn't want to have the boxes, you know, yeah. completely empty. It's kind of unsightly, but. Yeah. No, I think you're right because we don't know how that that process, how quick that process is going to go for Alan. So. Mm -hmm interesting so you were saying that we had five boxes left is that correct that's mm -hmm. correct and then we have about five fields that we were talking about doing the murals on that is there any would that be too much for public works if we had one box for each field 
because they're double sided and maybe the schools like Mr. Mills was saying could do some type of thing to where the students it's like an award that they get their art in there for mm -hmm. six months or something like that sure we could do that that's a cool idea yeah mm -hmm. you know we've been paying you know a hundred dollars an image for the art boxes I, th I think any kid would be happy to get that are the uh, are the solar panels part of the boxes, or are they purchased separately? Have we already purchased the five solar panels to go on those boxes? They 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 come together. Okay. Um, the company that makes it, Portaboard in Texas, mm -hmm. uh, it, that's why it took so long to even get them. These are all one of a kind, so that the you know you've got the frame with the LED lights in them, and then they're connected. If you go down on the sponge docks, you can see. There's the, like a battery box right. and then the solar panel. Right, yeah. So how would that affect? I mean, they're not attached, are they? If you no. don't use the solar panels, I mean. Okay, this well, if you don't use the solar panels, it's, it's just a box. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know, I don't, you know, as I said, it's, uh, they were quite a bit more money to do the solar panels than to do hardwired. So you mean to do you mean to connect them or I mean we've already paid for them so no 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 I'm not saying to, well, you know I mean definitely going to use the ones we already have but I'm saying going forward if with the more, with the fields because you know like if we put them in tree you know places with tree canopies where they're not going to be getting enough sun mm -hmm. to power the batteries yeah. it's not a big deal to hardwire them and they're significantly yeah. cheaper because we're not paying for the batteries or the solar panels. Gotcha. Anybody else have any technical questions about the boxes? And the thing is that there's a uh, there's a key that the the one side of the box flops open, and that's how the vinyl panels slide in and out. So. Uh, so would you like us to look at each at five different fields and find a location at each of those fields? A, a post, we, yeah, to put a them on. A post to do yeah. that because mm -hmm. we would hardwire them, right? Well, I, I would think if, if 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 solar works there, okay. you could do that. It would be maybe easier for the guys. If it to wasn't install. big enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Right, because yeah. the, the the thirty by thirties are very heavy. That's true. And uh, you know the other thing to you know we 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 do have enough in the budget to buy some smaller ones for that are hardwired. I think they're only maybe like five or six hundred dollars a piece. You have to look back on that quote. Right. But uh, you know, I think because I think the solar boxes were like thirteen hundred a piece. Does that sound right? Uh, I think they were about nine hundred, I believe. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. So. Okay. okay. Project updates. Let me know. Uh, okay. Project okay. updates. Chris Christopher still Advent Health. The ER is complete, but. I don't know whether there's going to be a ribbon cutting or a mural reveal because of COVID. I seriously doubt it. Um, Black Heritage Project, the updates. Um, it, the, it's in, uh, Diane did put it in CAFE. We've gotten some um, inquiries. And um, I added some photographs of the proposed site to the appendix. Marissa did update that. Yeah. On CAFE. Okay. So uh, if anybody wants, you know, it's, it'll be posted, right, Diane, on the Tarpon Arts? Oh, yeah, it is. Right. So if you want to take a look at it, it's a PDF. You can just... It's also on the Pinellas... Um, oh, what's the Pinellas Art Association down there? Oh, what's Creative Pinellas? No. Oh. Um, the one in St. Pete. What's the... The Craft Art? Yeah. No, it's like... Uh, what is their... What are they called? Um... The St. Pete Fine Arts or something, or something yeah. or other. It's their, you know, their art website. So. Okay, the next agenda item borders on the miraculous. Mm. Despite several attempts by myself and especially Diane, thank you, Diane. <laughs> Okay, uh, I finally got in touch with Desmond Clark of St. Kate's. He actually called me back this morning. I don't think he knew where I was. <laughs> anyway, um, and this is about the repair of the Glenna Goodacre Naya, the one that fell over, okay? 
uh, his analysis shows that there was insufficient structural report for this in the other standing naiad as the pieces were originally planned to be displayed indoor or behind stanchions. They were not really meant to be displayed outdoors. The solution is to create a reinforced structure inside the limbs of the statues that can be more securely affixed to the foundation. He was finally able to contact the original foundry that created the statues in Bradenton. However, the addition of this metal reinforcement, which is done with a weld, will discover, discolor the, origin, the existing patina so that the patina will have to be redone from the knees down. Uh, St. Kate's will, take, will pick up the additional statue, deliver it to the foundry, and reinstall it once it's been repaired. The foundation will have to be reworked to provide new support for the reinforced statues, and um, they will uh, also re repatinate them. Is that the correct term? Okay. Um, I asked him, this was the big thing, I asked him to create a draft invoice because the damage to the statue is covered by an insurance policy, so I'd like to at least get an idea of what's going on and perhaps start the claim project process with the uh, insurance. Uh, I made notes while I was talking to him this morning, and I printed it up and emailed it to Diane if anybody would like to see it, you know, because I wanted to make sure I got everything right, but uh, I, uh, I did kick his non-responsiveness. Uh, it's been extremely frustrating, and... Uh, you know, Robert indicated that he's been extremely busy. He's been doing a lot of out-of-state work and other things. But, you know, uh, I, I, I have difficulty with anybody who doesn't return phone calls or emails. I mean, even if you just say, I'm still alive, mm -hmm. I don't care. As long, we, we just, right, Diane? He just fell into a, a, a pit somewhere. So that's the update on the uh, NIAD repair. Um, New business, does anybody have any additions or anything else they want to discuss for the October 13th meeting? Other than what, what's already on the current agenda? Remember you were talking about doing the holograms in Spring Bayou and to recontact them? Maybe they got some type of new technology or somehow? Um, yeah, the problem with the uh, with holograms in general on that scale is uh, height. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing is that you need, you know, buildings that are a few stories high to put the different cameras, and that's something we don't have here. Could that be installed on poles, or would they move too much? Uh, I, I was in... I'll have to give you my notes, David. Uh, I was in touch with... Uh, I, I, the, what gave me the idea was I saw a virtual holographic cir circus from Germany, mm -hmm. and I thought it would be great to have, you know, like something like that, but sea creatures down at the sponge docks. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I finally tracked down the the company that did it, which you know they're headquartered in Toronto, but uh, he actually <laughs> did a virtual tour of Tarpon Springs, you know, did like Google. Mm -hmm. earth and stuff like that and basically I mean he put a lot of time into it and basically told me that uh, he doesn't think it would work here because the lack of height like the buildings aren't tall enough yeah, yeah. because the, the thing is that the cameras have to you know <coughs> project you know it's like a circular projection so onto the surface of a building, for example? Is that what you're saying? No, they kind of intersect in space, but mm. they have, they need the height. It's... Create the image. It's right. to project from a height. Correct. Right. I'm sorry, I didn't make that clear. Yes. Thanks, we'll see you. When it's not a building, it's like a go-go. It's like an artificial reality. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So you actually see it, like, splashing around. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Like, right in front of you. He even he even had one that would have been fabulous on the sponge docks, and it was just this huge whale coming down the road down the street. Yeah. I mean, I mean the, the the stuff that's possible, you know, like some of the examples he set sent were just absolutely amazing. But it doesn't work. Maybe if you'd like to 
to follow up because yeah, it's would, it's really an interesting technology. Yeah, because I can I in my mind I'm seeing something like some type of thing that goes on every Friday at eight p.m. Right. You know that brings everybody into the city. Right. You know. Well, we what what I the original plan was to do it for the holidays and have Santa and a sled yes. come down the sponge docks and have all of these. You know, leaping sea creatures. You know, having something come out of the Antelope River. You know, and uh, it would be just just a hoop for the kids. And you could have a Shark Week one because right. you were talking about the sharks. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, I mean, the potential is 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 there. And, and it has to be four stories, approximately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, again, the you know, this was. What was this, Diane, a couple of years ago? Mm -hmm. So maybe the technology has has improved. Yeah, because I'm thinking a pole, you know, with a deep footer, you know, but that also could shift too much because mm -hmm. if they have to intersect. <coughs> right. Let me see if I can find the old... Is, is, excuse me a minute. Is there anything else going on? Do I need to be here anymore? Uh, I, have uh, to be in, it was, I have to be in Dunedin at 4 o'clock. Uh, Robert, no. We're, I was just about to adjourn after the uh, two announcements Diane has. Okay. Oh, I thought we were going to talk about the new business, the um, Spring Bayou. Water Furniture. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yes. Uh, but I think you can leave, okay. Robert. If you, All right, thank you. I, I meant to talk to you before. The meeting, but I got like oh, because yeah, I couldn't find a place to park. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Okay, bye bye. Have a good day. Mm, bye bye. Bye, Robert. Thanks. Okay, yeah, the new business. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, um, Diane, why don't you take this over? Because I know you you sent some images. Um, no, we were. I was just uh, looking at uh, some that were. I, I have like a, you know, if you all know Pinterest, you know, you got boards. I've got a public art board and everything, but I, I love to, they have a lot of public art on Pinterest as, mm -hmm. as well as Instagram. But um, they had really neat sculpture mm -hmm. coming out of the water, you know, like this flock of birds and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just thought it would be so beautiful in Spring Bayou, you know, because every there's so many people that, use Craig Park. It amazes me because mm -hmm. my office is there so I can see it you know, all the time. Yeah. But they love it. And, you know, we have to, we'd have to be cognizant of, you know, the flow of boats and they have the Christmas boat parade and everything and all the manatees, so not to um, upset the wildlife. But if we put it kind of more towards the side, there's like a little dip there that, you know, mm -hmm. could be right off of the seawall. And uh, I just there's just so many really cool things, mm -hmm. and there could also it could also have a kinetic component to it. Right. So you know I just thought you know that might be a neat thing to put, you know, on your list of things to maybe consider for mm -hmm. the future, because it just seems like an ideal area with it's kind of like right between the sponge docks and the um downtown area and mm -hmm. which was growing so you know i just thought that was pretty neat yeah i i, I can envision it you know like like you said like along the the seawall area where it wouldn't impact the wildlife or the fish or mm -hmm. the manatees or anything else you know push it along the mm -hmm. side kayakers yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, lucian how to me Spring Bayou is the water feature. Right. It's a living, mm -hmm. changing environment. Mm -hmm. It's tidal. It changes daily, seasonally. Mm -hmm. And although there is historic precedent for a fountain right. in, in the Spring Bayou, um, I think um, our collective sensibility has moved back to appreciating it as a natural resource. I do know that there is some uh, concern about the water quality in the bayou, mm -hmm. and, uh, and the BOC has had at least one presentation 
on installing a living shoreline on the existing seawall. Mm -hmm. These are a plaques. They're dimensional, and they're um, they're set into the existing seawall, and they encourage bivalves and oysters mm -hmm. to attach oh, cool. yeah. and filter the water. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Volvo makes the best mm -hmm. known ones. They've been installed in Sarasota, in Sydney Harbor, oh, that's in Australia. Yeah. And they're, they're fabulous. Mm -hmm. um, they can be shaped like coral. They can be shaped like mangrove roots. It sounds like that's an art project already. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And it, you know, it speaks exactly to what Renee was saying about mm -hmm. Um, public art, sustainability, mm -hmm. right. you know, infrastructure, all of that. So right. mm -hmm. maybe we could be read into that. That sounds like something from the sustainability committee. Yeah. I think um, we, I think we so that might need more of a dialogue with a great opportunity. Yeah. And not to wander off the water feature, but I think Spring Bayou needs something different. But um, I do think water features in general have a future here because as temperatures rise mm. we need ways for people to hydrate mm -hmm. in public spaces uh, we need um, cooling stations like misters and, I think, and things like that that they have in the parks exactly yeah. and i think that's a great opportunity for calls to artists mm -hmm. um, you know how how would you creatively design a fountain um, for maybe the Mother Mears parking lot when it's 105 degrees and mm -hmm. we want people to continue to eat, shop, and play in Tarpon Springs. So right. I think we ought to think about water features <clears throat> in that way. Oh, that's that's really fascinating. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, well, that's why, I, you know, uh, we <laughs> wanted to bring it to... To, to, to and now that talks. Renee has given us permission to plan the future. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wahoo! <laughs> Bill? Well, lots of times those water features also have a secondary purpose or even a primary purpose of aerating the water. Right. Mm -hmm. So that aeration, you know, I think if we, again, combine the sustainability with the, the artistic uh, component of it, I think it's a fantastic thing yeah. to look at because mm -hmm. you could really add a... a oxygenate a fair amount yeah, of the, right. uh, the water there for the... Right, it could be, yeah, an artistic <coughs> sustainability, and, and, you know, and that's a story. Piece. That's a story to tell, too, when people come to yeah. see it. it right. It's not just art. It's, it's art mm -hmm. and sustainability, mm -hmm. and this mm -hmm. is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So I think that's got some great mm -hmm. potential. Mm -hmm. Lucy, would you like to take that on as your project? It sounds like you've got a real passion for it. I, I can work on it a little bit sure Great. maybe yeah. but uh, at the but next I, meeting I, we could all bring ideas after the, i mean i think that, that's a great idea i didn't even know that there were and things I apply it in a and maybe just way everybody way. bring ideas maybe. Yeah. yeah 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 that's it's it kind of reminds me of victor schrauberger has anybody ever heard of him mm -hmm. victor schrauberger and he was all about learning how water moves you know it, it moves counterclockwise through a hose it doesn't move straight and um, he made these fountains how the water would flow and it would come back and circulate and it aerated ponds and things of that nature and they do a lot of stuff with uh, lakes so mm -hmm. i don't know if maybe that's something too because people would kind of want to see an invention that you know is a hundred some years old maybe that could be David, maybe you could send that to Diane, who could send it to Lucienne, because I know we can't. Yeah, I could do that. I'll never tell if it comes to yeah. me. <laughs> I believe that. Is Big Brother watching? <laughs> yeah, if you find any ideas, just send them to me, and I'll just forward them. That's exciting. Yeah, Debbie, you have any we did. We did one in Chesapeake um, in our lakeside park, and we also did artwork, which was uh, metal, um, but we also did a fountain, and the fountain, I, I'm not going to say it was like Bellagio, but it was a, a beautiful fountain with lights, so always on holidays, so if it was 4th of July, it would be red, white, and blue lighting, mm -hmm. or, you know, it, it, mm -hmm. and, it was, and it was very sweet, and you're absolutely right about the aeration of the water. It makes a huge difference huge in difference. the water, water oh, quality. Water right. quality. That would, ha that would help the, um, you know, the fish and the other, the manatees, I'm sure. The uh, anything permanent that goes in Spring Bayou 
is subject to regulation, mm -hmm. Department of EPA. Environmental Protection, yep. okay. and possibly the Army Corps. Mm -hmm. I asked Commissioner Vaticotis about this, and he, he there is a whole series of regulatory agencies, mm -hmm. so it's... Um, They'd be the two Army. primary ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay, well, it's, this sounds interesting. I think you're going to have a lot of fun with this, Lucienne. I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Diane, your city announcements. No, I, I had emailed these to you, but I just uh, wanted just to remind everybody. I'll probably leave these up here just as a reminder, you know, but please let me know if you can't attend, as, you know, a meeting as soon as possible, um, just so we make sure we have a quorum. And then... Um, <clears throat> Just so Mike and Mark are going to be starting our my tarpon art season yes <laughs> this weekend so they're um, pretty busy because they you know do all the committee and board meetings and everything too so their request was you know if we have anything that we want to share kind of like Renee's um, you know presentation or if you have something that you want to project up there for discussion to try to get it to me at least a week ahead so they can get everything coordinated because. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, with Sherlock Holmes, they're they're doing you know the projections for the right. the play, and they're also doing sound effects and all kinds of things. So it's like they like to Talented do things guys. ahead of time. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that those are just you know, my two housekeeping things. Okay. Do you have anything, Marissa? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Our next meeting is Wednesday, October thirteenth at two o'clock. And can I entertain a motion to adjourn? Lucianne? Third. Second, David? Second. All in favor? Anybody opposed? <laughs> <laughs> Meeting is adjourned at 3.31 p.m. Thank you all. This was great.